cents, right? But when you first start out, if you know this number, you can go into the pay per clicks and you're not going to lose money. You, at worst, will break even. It goes even one step further too, and I think it's come you know back to the back end selling thing. That is, and now I don't recommend you do this. I'm not suggesting you do this until you're you know until you're comfortable with it. Uh, I don't even do this very often. It's pretty rare. Uh, I always believe in big time ROI, but there's a lot of people out there that lose money in the front end to make it in the back end. In other words, they actually they will pay seven, you know say that say that you're only making on average 50 cents a visitor, meaning you're, that's what you're making in profit per visitor. Uh, you can afford to pay 50 cents a visitor and break even. If you're buying at 40 cents a visitor, you're making money. Uh, you can go in and pay 60, 70 cents a visitor and lose money on the front end. You're actually losing money when someone makes a sale. Uh, but you know that if you're a good back-end marketer, when you're sending these autoresponders on the third day, seventh day, tenth day, when you're sending newsletters, promotions, and so on, you know, a month later, two days, two weeks later, and so on, you're going to make more sales. At the end, that profit per customer could be a lot more. You end up with getting 80, 90, 90 cents, a dollar profit per customer over you know, 30 or 60 days, you're willing to lose money today, but you know they're gonna buy stuff over the next, you know, next couple of weeks that you can actually make money at the end by losing money today, making more money in the back end by getting that customer in the door and offering them other products and services to sell. And you track that the same way you track this. You find out how much profit you make from that customer, you divide it by how many, how many uh, divide it by what the conversion ratio is, it equals a net number for you. So it's very easy to figure out um, no and idea. a perfect example of that, right now we're actually just setting up a campaign. We know our visitor value. We know exactly what our visitor value is. And ra or, and, sorry, we know the lifetime value of our cost, each visitor we get to our website. So we're actually setting up a campaign right now where we're driving to the site not to buy, but to subscribe. Remember I told you that every email address is worth, in the lifetime, a lifetime of a subscriber, every email address is worth $5 to me. That means over the next couple of years, that person will give me 5 On average, every email address to collect, I will get five dollars for that email address, and, and of course, I hope I don't explain it the wrong way. Explain it, but they may think, "Why is every email address going to give you five bucks?" On average, that's what I make. Yeah, of course, one guy is going to buy a thousand dollars stuff, and the other guy's not going to buy nothing. But on average, it works out to be five dollars yeah. per person. So I can go in there and start bidding, not for sales, but bidding to drive traffic and just collecting subscribers. Because I'm a smart marker, which I hope I am, I go on Some people and said auto respond so. again and again, and put them all on my list and sell them other things that I get my visitor value back. I get the money I spent back through email, by marketing through email. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope I'm explaining it well enough. Does that make sense? Nod your heads if that makes sense. Good, okay. All right, okay. Okay, now this is the trick, choosing the right keywords. Um, process you need to go through for, to, for finding keywords. Most people come up and I say, well, how, how many keywords are you using? I have got 10. 10 isn't going to do anything for you. You should have, and I don't care what business you're in, you'll be like, oh, I don't, have a, I don't have that many keywords. I guarantee I could find, at minimum, 100 keywords for your website. You should be starting with 100 keywords. We're an internet marketing business. Our keyword list that we start with is probably going to be around 1,500, and we'll start narrowing it down for there. Finding you, which keywords are making you money, which ones aren't, and shrinking the list down. Yeah, and, and you'd be surprised. And you know, you can't rule out keywords because some key, obscure keywords will make you money at odd times. Um, so what you need to do is, there's a couple tools you need. There's two sites you need to go to to compile your list of keywords. The first one is inventory.overture.com. That site, if you type in a keyword, for example, um, if you had uh, dogs, you had something related to dogs, go in there, type in dogs. It's going to give you a list of all of the searches they've had related to dogs and how many searches that have been through our Overture and all our sponsored sites, so that big mass of sites for that particular keyword over the last 30 days or the, the, in the last month. And uh, so that's going to show you what keywords are being searched and what ones are related and how much traffic each one of those are getting. So basically it ranks them for you. Okay, well this one's getting the most traffic, so that's why. And, and it puts I them in order, by the way. So like dogs, a simple keyword is going to get the most traffic. Yeah. Like massive traffic, then be dog training, dog toys, dog, yeah. and, and, and as these names get bigger, but if you're flying it down to dogs in Seattle, dogs, you know, dog bone fractures. I mean, it'll get into really obscure keywords. Yeah. And they'll just the searches will start shrinking down to go from you know a million searches, you know, not big, maybe a you know, few hundred thousand searches to fifty search, fifty yeah. thousand to twenty thousand to ten, down to like two searches for the keyword dog bone fracture yeah. or something. You know. And if you type in something like dog, that's not what you want for a keyword because yeah. dog is just way too general. Unless you have a portal about dogs and everything about dogs. Um, 
you would probably be looking anywhere from sort of the, the group in the middle. Anything that's um, more specific niche keywords. You're not want, going to want to go after those general ones. So that's you'll, one. You'll find words you never could, would think about yourself that come up going, oh, that totally applies to me. And you're like, I shouldn't think of that word. So it's, 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 a, it's an inventory suggestion tool. You put in your main couple of words, it adds on all these other different words plus your word that have been searched and, and, and gives you that list going, oh, dogs in Seattle. I never thought of dogs in Seattle. Yeah. You know, dog kennels. Oh, I thought of, I mean, never thought of dog kennels. I never thought of, you know, dog, dog resorts. Oh, I would have thought of dog kennels, not dog resorts, of course. And it shows you how many searches dog resorts are getting. Where you put your dog in for the little, you know, those new dog resorts they have now for dog kennels and that kind of stuff. Okay, so you're gonna use inventoryoverture.com. That's gonna give you a list. And don't type in one keyword, take that list and run away. Type in all sorts of different keywords that are unrelated. Copy, paste, put it in a Word doc, put it in Excel, just start making this monster list. And in, in an hour, you should be able to have that list of 100, just from there. Next tool you're gonna wanna go to is Word Tracker. Now, <clears throat> why do you need to use both of these? Because Overture, inventory at Overture, it tracks um, all of the searches from Overture.com as well as MSN, Yahoo, everything like that. That's what that tracks. The other tool called Word Tracker uses a whole separate different set of search engines to actually pull the information from and it actually goes into far more detail and far more detailed um, keywords. Now it's WordTracker.com, they have a free trial service, you can check it out and it's, you could just use a free trial service but it's not as condensed or it's not as detailed um, so I'd recommend paying the 30 bucks or whatever it is for a membership and signing up and actually using their service, same thing, you type in your keyword, it lists out a bunch more keywords. Now the beauty of Word Tracker is, is like we said with inventory.overture.com, you type in dogs and it could have everything related to dogs, right? Now you have to manually go through, weed out the ones that really don't make much sense for your particular niche. The beauty of Overture is, you go in, you type in dogs, it's gonna list out everything like inventory.overture did, or Overture did, but then instead of having to weed it all out on your own, you go down and you click on, um, say you have uh, uh, dog food, because I like that example. Say you have dog food. Um, is your product. So you go down and you click on the keyword dog food and then what it does is it spawns out a list of keywords that are all related to that niche and how much traffic they're getting and they have a special system for ranking um, the traffic. It's all explained on the Word Tracker site. I don't have time to go into that right now but um, at the end of the day the moral of the story is, is go to Word Tracker, use their system, read their instructions and you should have a great list of keywords. But It's no the same service that we use. It's the same yeah. service all of yeah. our clients use. It's the same service that most of our successful students use, wordtracker.com. Yeah. It, it's super powerful. You have to use this. You have to use both of these. And you have to start with at least 100 keywords. At least. And that's, that's a bare minimum. I would be more shooting for 500. And like I said, track every single one of them to the point of sale. And in two weeks, you're going to know what's driving traffic, making you money, and what is absolutely wasting your money. And you just get rid of them, and you'll have a awesome profitable campaign. All right, okay, so choose the right keywords. Um, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Pick uh, highly specific keywords with smaller traffic streams. Those are the ones that are gonna convert the highest. If you're gonna go for the very general ones, make sure you have a pre-qualified statement so people aren't just clicking through unaware of what they're gonna get. Throw the price in there as we showed you. You know, 300 page piano book, for $69. Um, cheaper and overlooked by your competitors. A lot of people just go in there, like I said before, they'll have 10 keywords. They've missed out on the other 400 that you guys are going to find, which means you're going to be driving a lot more traffic than your competitors are. As long as you're using the two tools we told you about. Exactly. Um, and uh, drive qualified traffic instead of general traffic. This is just a general rule. So many people go in there and they'll go in there and they'll bid on dog and they will be broken a day and they won't have got a sale and they'll be really unhappy and they won't want to use pay-per-clicks anymore. That's not how you do it. Oh yeah, that's one other thing. Um, common misspellings of top keywords, those are great because if somebody, okay, I don't want to use dog here because somebody's spelled dog or, well, you know, actually no, that's possible. People would type in like a dog, they'd be uh, D-G-O-S, like just when they're typing, we all make those little errors and stuff like that. Bid on that. People will type it in as long as you come up 
you know, you're going to be paying nothing for it, and that's what they're searching for. And your competitors will never think about this. Okay, now another way, Overture's got some great tools in place. I'll cover this really quickly. If you spend some time in Overture, you're going to see all of this, but uh, a lot of people wonder, you know, um, how, how am I protected? How do I know that uh, they're not going to drain my credit card or my account in one day, et cetera, et cetera? They have a bunch of restrictions in place. You can go in there and you can set up your account so that you don't want to spend more than 20 bucks a day or you don't want to bid. Um, you can set it so that uh, it'll automatically bid up to a certain amount on a keyword. So if you want to remain in the number two position but somebody comes in and bids above you, it'll readjust your bid so you remain in number two until um, until it hits the cap that you've specified. Um, and they've got all sorts of crazy tools in there that we don't have a lot of time to go over today, but it's all in there. Go read through it, spend time in there. They've got amazing tools that they've talked about it earlier. Um, one point here, eliminate costly bid gaps. Um, this only implies in all of the other search engines, not in Overture. Overture built a system um, that actually doesn't help them. It's more profitable for us, is they eliminate bid gaps. So if you're bidding on a keyword for the number one position, you're bidding, um, five dollars and the guy in the second spot's bidding four dollars you do not pay five dollars you pay four dollars and one cents they automatically adjust for that so it actually works out in favor of us um, other search and pay-per-click search engines they're not as um, uh, in depth and as, as powerful as Overture so they don't have these tools so when you get into the other pay-per-click search engines you have to monitor that on your own um, once again, it's not the matter, it's not the number of clicks through that matter, it's the quality. Um, if you guys are tracking it and they're making you money, those are quality listings. If they're not, you got rid of them. We talked about that already. And... Just some rules to abide by. Yeah. You want to make sure you're making ROI of two to three times what you pay on your actual per clicks on the most important keywords. Then you're going to have lots of them. You're going to have maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand. The most important ones you get lots of traffic on, when I'm getting two to three times ROI for every 50 cents you spend, you should be making a buck to a buck fifty. Again, these sound like small numbers. Add that on to a thousand, two thousand, five thousand searches, that's thousands of dollars you're making now. So please be aware that numbers we're talking about equal big numbers when you start talking lots of key or lots of searches. Okay. Ah, this is interesting as well. Uh, be specific. Place different ads for each product you sell. A lot of people, they'll set it up, they'll send it to a made page on their site, um, they'll have, say, um, different, uh, we'll use fishing as an example this time. We're getting away from the dog stuff. Okay, so say you have all sorts of different fishing, different fishing rods um, and fishing tackle and fishing gear and you know, uh, float tubes, fly fishing, whatever. Um, if you go in and you drive all of that traffic to one page off all these different, slightly unrelated keywords, they're gonna get there and then they have to find what they're looking for and if it's there or not. And this is just a general fly. If somebody's looking for a fly fishing rod and you've advertised under specific keywords for fly fishing, that should be a separate account, separate account driving to a separate page for your fly fishing specifically. So that when they get there, that's the first thing they see. It's a typical rule. People get to your site, you got 10 seconds. I don't care what site it is, you have 10 seconds to catch their attention. If you don't catch their attention with exactly what they were searching for, they're gone. So take the time. A lot of people are like, oh, that's too much work. Well, yeah, did you want to make money? That's, that's what it comes down to. You have to take the time to set each one up to go to your different products um, so that when they search a keyword, the, when Play J land on is exactly what they were looking for. Um, all right, keyword matching options. This is another feature that Overture offers. They're very sophisticated. Um, they have exact matches where it, you type in dog, you know, that comes up. They have phrase match. Um, if key, there's phrases that kind of match um, what your, yours are, they'll pull that up. Um, they have broad matching. Um, if your keyword is in any relation to that, they will pull yours up. Um, excluded words. You know, I want a broad match, but if this word's in there, pull that out. This is getting fairly complicated, um, but once you've mastered the main, uh, once you've uh, mastered the main bidding strategies, you start playing with these things. We don't need to spend a lot of time on this today. This is stuff you can learn. Just spend a lot of time in Overture site. They have a lot of great information there. I'm trying to say there's a lot of opportunities to do a lot of really cool things when you get yeah. really specific and making a lot of money. We want to drive some of those specific things home. You don't need to know about those today. You just start doing it and bidding in search engines. We have all the little fine stuff you can do 
uh, and the tools yeah. you can use inside that later on. The people that are more advanced in the room that are doing that stuff, these are some of the tools that if you aren't using, you should be using. <coughs> if you weren't aware of, you now are aware of. That can add more profitability to your pay-per-click <coughs> campaigns right now because pay-per-clicks, as we've already mentioned a few times, are the fastest way to drive traffic to your site tomorrow. All you need to do is pay for it. As long as you're paying less than what you're making, buy as much as you can buy. And as I've been sitting up here preaching how ethical and how good Overture has been and how they don't make you bid too much. Well, okay, they're doing one thing right now that's a little bit iffy. Um, they're actually changing their exact match the way it's set up. If somebody types in a keyword and you have bid on that exact keyword, they bring it up. They're changing it to broad match, which means you're going to be getting uh, the default setting on your account will be broad match. So if you have an Overture account right now, um, and all of a sudden you just saw a spike in traffic, that is unqualified traffic because it is actually going to be coming from phrases and stuff that may only slightly match and could be completely unrelated. Like, you know, for example, if you're specifically dog food and we have, you know, Shih Tzu grooming you know, and you're getting search results on that, that's, you don't I, I want think, that. I think so the key you, here is that if you have one of those accounts right now, you need to go into it immediately. Make sure and, they're not actually automatically putting you under under broad search um, um, because they're going to. Yeah. Make sure you go back down S to the switch previous. it back to exact match. Once exactly. you've got it mastered, then you can start playing with that. But I would probably avoid broad match at all times. Um, all right. <sighs> okay. Geo targeting pretty straightforward. Allows you to target specific areas. Um, so if you offer a service that's only located in California, you can target California searches. This is where the it searches, that's going to be the next step in search engines is geo-targeting. That's where search engines are going to go. Um, that's the future of search engines. Um, this, is, is the, this is one of the things I was going to, uh, going to talk about later on today in the future of internet marketing. And one of them is that one of the things that's hard to do in the net is find, it's very easy to find a niche in. I want to find all the people that are you know, into warplanes. I want to find people that are into tulip gardening. I want to find the people that are into whatever different category of people. But I can't find tulip gardeners in Los Angeles. Uh, it's very difficult to do that. I can't find war plane hobby enthusiasts from World War II in New York. But I can find them for the entire world very easily, but I can't geo-target, I can't geographically specify that. That's where search engines are going now, so that you can actually search in geographical areas rather than globally on interest groups. That was one of the downsides of the net. Good for us because if you have a product you can distribute electronically or you can ship, you now have the whole world as your market. That's why so many people are getting rich because they now sell the whole world rather than having a retail store and selling just a local market. They're trying to reverse that scenario now and allowing you to do both. Not just have a global market, but also have a situation where you can actually sell just because you're specific in that area. A perfect example, I'm going to get a little off track for one second, sorry. Right. And I'm, we're over time. I need to start wrapping this thing up. But um, one of the things that's happening, and this is getting very similar to geo-targeting, is, and I'm getting off a little off track on pay-per-click, sorry for this. Go is, through it. <laughs> is, uh, surprise, surprise, I'm off yeah. track. Um, is, for example, uh, Asia is way ahead in cell phone technology. And it's already happening in the US, where literally, I'll have my cell phone, and you have messages come in where I walk past, or I walk past within a one mile radius of, of a certain restaurant, they're actually sending a message, a colored message to my screen, telling me to go buy a pizza right now, it's a two for one deal. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, it's scary, yeah. but it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you literally, and I'm, I'm walking past an area of town, it tells me to go eat at this restaurant, they're having a two for one deal right now, at lunchtime, when I'm hungry. It's very targeted, geo-targeted ads in a specific area at certain times of the day, like when I'm hungry, or at night when I'm looking for a place to eat, or um, when I'm trying to think of things that are more time-related, if I'm shopping in the middle of the day, but the shopping ad wouldn't come up at seven o'clock at night because the stores are closed. But I'd be walking past the mall, I get an ad for, hey, you know, go visit the mall with 100 stores on it, including blah, blah, blah. I would get that ad at you know, eight o'clock until five o'clock, but I would never get that ad at nine o'clock at night because they're closed. The power of this is very amazing to specifically target someone in a certain geographical area at certain times of the day and so on. Anyways, I know I, that's a little off track of pay-per-click. I'm sure that will go pay-per-click too. <laughs> um, but it gives you an idea of what's happening as far as specific target marketing online and geo-targeting in general, not yeah. pay-per-click. Sorry, Derek. No, that's uh, fine. And I mean, Google right now, and I know the company that's doing this, they're working on a technology that will allow you to walk along on your PDA and go New York past a restaurant and GPS down to you and they'll tell you, okay, walk two blocks left and one block right and they'll put you at a restaurant that's That's already good. happening today. It's been happening yeah. for a while. The uh, to the unbelievable. Uh, okay. I want Italian, I want it in this certain price range, great. Walk two blocks this way, four blocks that way and one block that way. So once this comes along, you're gonna see a huge influx of new retail restaurants. Everybody's gonna jump on this. It's been, well, how do I use the internet for my, my restaurant or my retail store? This is just gonna be a whole new wave onto the internet.
Um, OK, <clears throat> get your site listed in smaller PPCs. Um, use this. Atlas one point um, to manage multiple campaigns. Um, I'll be right up front. This is not a cheap service. Um, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks a, a month um, if you have a lot of keywords. But on the flip side, that couple hundred bucks a month for this to manage all your um, PPC campaigns in the top PPCs, you'll save that back in time 10 times over. Um, and uh, these guys are professionals. Formerly was GoToast. You guys may have heard of GoToast. Who's heard of GoToast before in the room? Yeah, they, they, they've, they've been around for years. They are an absolutely amazing company. They have contracts with all of the. So I want to make it very clear. I don't think people understood this. At the end of the day, what's happening here is this service for a few hundred bucks a month will manage all of your bids for you on all the different pay per click search engines. It's like a tool where Central Two would go into and manage all your pay per clicks and all the traffic and the keywords and how much you're spending on all these different pay per click search engines, and it's from one console. For that service, for that for that convenience, and for saving you time and money, and and probably actually making you more money because you can manage all in one area, it costs a fee. So it's a it's a bid management tool for that. Absolutely. Of We're going to move into search engines. Uh, these are organic search engines, how to get the number one ranking, the top search engines, and what's working right now. We're going to go through this relatively quick. Um, we have this to cover and a few other things to cover. We're going to be packed today, and I refuse to cut slides and refuse to cut information, so we're just going to have to motor on through it and get through it. All right, first thing, here's the big three. You have Google, Yahoo, MSN, and those are percentages that work out of what, as far as how many searches are done, the referrals that come from that. As you can tell, Google is number one. Uh, Yahoo is number two, and MSNB number three. You can expect double the response if you're ranked high, if you rank the same position in Google as if you're ranked the same position as MSN. That's what I'm trying to say here. Google is twice as powerful, gives you twice the amount of traffic that MSN. But that's the kind of numbers we're trying to come up with here. Okay. Um, search engine industry and developments. I'm going to kind of go over the big three. What's happening? Things have changed. Uh, Google went public. The IPO brought in over 1.1 billion dollars, which is pretty amazing. Give them an opportunity to even explode fa uh, faster and do more research, which is what they're all about. Uh, they're soon to launch Gmail. You've heard of Gmail. It's not officially launched. It's still in beta version, but it's soon to launch. And of course, uh, there, there's been a lot of talk of them, them moving into instant uh, messenger service. So. Um, Yahoo, uh, I always say uh, Ink to Me. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, and so they bought Ink to Me, uh, Overture, and AltaVista, and all the web last year uh, to get us to basically become competitors, for lack of better terms, with Google because Yahoo and Google were partnered. So that's changed a lot. And also, um, you'll find that Yahoo and Google now are kind of going head to head and competing a lot now. So that's why the, uh, Yahoo stopped using Google, and now uh, they've each bought different partners to make up for what they lost in the Yahoo-Google partnership. So uh, that's done. MSN, they're soon to launch their own search engine pretty soon, or power with, their, um, uh, power with their own search engine technology, which means they'll no longer be using Yahoo anymore, so you need to be aware of that. As far as uh, who's powering who, well, Yahoo powers, there's two ways it powers things. First, it's, it's free listing, meaning that the actual search engine itself powers AOL and Netscape. The paid listing, meaning actually the where you pay in Google, Google AdWords, appears in AOL, Netscape, Ashgis, Hotbot, uh, I can't even say the word, I'm so bad at it, and uh, Lycos. So that's where when you bid in uh, Google AdWords, you'll show up in the paid listings in those areas, and when you have a free listing in Google, you'll show up in AOL and Netscape too. Same thing with Yahoo, this is what it powers. Your free listing will also show, in other words, when you're listed for free in your regular listing in Yahoo, will show up also in MSN, but not much longer, AltaVista, all the web, and Hotbutt. And then when you pay for a listing in Yahoo, which by the way, when you pay for a listing in Yahoo, which you're really paying Overture, Yahoo and Overture are the same thing. Uh, well, Yahoo bought Overture. So uh, when you actually pay for a listing in Yahoo, you're, it's powered by Overture, and Overture also powers MSN, AltaVista, and all the web for their paid sponsor listings. So that's how it works. And note, again, MSN is going to change a little bit, and all the web is going to change a little bit as things get bought out and new technology becomes available. They're going to start using their own search engine technology. Now, you need to keep on top of some of the new search engine technology. The reason is because they change their algorithms so frequently. You may be ranked high right now. You may not be ranked high five weeks from now because they changed their algorithms. So you need to be very careful of that. So you don't want to spend your entire business focusing on search engines. Only find out that, great, I'm making all my money for search engines. Have all your eggs in one basket. The algorithm changes. You're out of business. And by the way, that's happened. 
You get all your traffic from search and you think you're on top of the world. You forget about all these different other ways to promote your business. You forget about affiliate programs and email marketing. The list goes on and straight, you know, e-signs and so on and so on and so on. Then all of a sudden your search engine listing goes away from you because you can't control that and you're out of business tomorrow. Don't put all your eggs in one basket when it comes to free search engines. That's why we say here, free search engines are great to start with. They should not be your only way of marketing online and you should not trust in them because your ranking can change any day. Tomorrow you could wake up you know, with making no money and yesterday you could have made five grand from a search engine. Um, they don't want their search engine results manipulated so trying to trick them or play with the results uh, gets you in a lot of trouble. And lastly, uh, of course, is the Google dance they called it. They actually called it the Florida Google dance that happened in November of 2003 when all of a sudden many sites that were always at the top, all of a sudden just got dumped from Google, went nowhere, either went to the bottom listings or just, just disappeared because they changed their algorithms. Don't get caught in a situation like that where your whole business is based on Google, next thing you know, it disappears or you're disappeared from Google for some reason, you're blacklisted, they change their algorithm and you have no business, you're out of business. Don't rely on someone else for your business and revenue streams. Um, there's just some sneaky tricks you should uh, always avoid. Uh, even if your competitors are using this, you don't want to use these tricks. You may get away with them for a week, a day, a month, even six months, but they will come back to bite you. When they do bite you, you're a blacklist from the search engine. All that traffic you, 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 that you got before won't be worth the fact that you will never get listed again in that search engine, never have traffic from that search engine again. So uh, first thing is beware of irrelevant links. This is um, not really a trick, but uh, the idea of you trying to go into all these different links from all these irrelevant websites. Derek talked about that. You do not want to do that. It does not get you any higher ranking. The search engines are smart these days, not like we were three or four years ago. You want to be aware of irrelevant keywords. Uh, you don't want to be doing this at all. It has no impact. Some people, for example, will have a website uh, and try to draw traffic from another traffic source. You may have a website on dogs, but you may um, try to drive traffic to your website from cats, assuming that every cat owner has a dog when you have nothing to do with your site about cats. You do not want to do this. Um, don't use keyword stuffing in your meta tags. It means putting your keywords boom, 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 the same keyword over and over again in your meta tags. Do not do this. It does not get you any further. It does not help you, whatever you've learned. A lot of free e-signs, free publicity stuff, internet gurus that have no idea what the heck they're doing uh, teach this stuff. Oh yeah, stuff your key, or your meta tags full of keywords to get you higher ranking. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that worked four years ago. Doesn't work today. So be aware of what's working right now. Uh, only list your keywords in your meta tags. What I mean by list is a list, not for my, in my case, well, at least let's use the dog example. Dogs, 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 dogs. Dog training, dog training, dog training, dog training, dog training. No, don't do that. That is actually the keyword stuffing. But you can put listing, dog training, dog help, dog obedience, dog whatever. You can do that in your actual uh, meta tags. Just don't have repetitive stuff in it. So only list your keywords in your meta tags. Don't repeat them. Um, and what's called keyword stuffing. Uh, don't use multiple tags. Some people think that they use the same tag, same meta tag a couple of times to get you better ranking. That's a myth. It doesn't work. It gets you in trouble. Uh, going on, don't create link farms. What I mean by link farms is getting all these different other people out there to link to you and you link to them and you've been creating websites that have nothing to do with your business so you have links going back and forth. The search engines are smart, specifically Google. They're smart now. They don't fall for that kind of stuff anymore. Uh, avoid all free for all free for all link pages. People think that oh well, search engines you know depend on how relevant or how popular a site is. I'll just go to a search engine, or sorry, to a free for all link site. It's one of those sites that charge you nothing or like twenty five dollars or something, and they say we'll submit you to five hundred or five thousand search engines or five thousand search engine directories or link pages. Well, there's very few searches, they're mostly link pages. They're called free for all um, uh, free for all link pages, or they're called mother of all link pages. They do not work. Yes, your site will get linked for a day, a half a day, on these sites, you know, maybe 500 sites all over the place. That's the, just a way for them to capture information so they can spam you all the time under an opt-in guise. I won't get into how that works. It's not worth talking about. We don't have the time to talk about it today. Just let me tell you this. Do not go pay the 25, 50 bucks or free, whatever it is, for those places that say, we'll put you in 500 search engines, 5,000 search engines, directories, links, pages, so on. It does not work. It's a waste of your time. It'll get you in more trouble and have more hassle and anything else. And, it's, and you're also going to get a ton of spam from it, too. Uh, you mean you getting spam in your email box. Um, don't submit identical pages of your website with, uh, with different file names. That, again, will just get you in trouble and get you blacklisted in trouble. Please don't do this. These are all things that you want to avoid as far as sneaky tricks. Um, some of the people are teaching this stuff works. It doesn't. It worked. Some of the stuff worked a long time ago. Those are tricks you used to do a couple of years ago. They don't work anymore. The internet's advancing. Please don't do that stuff. Just get you in trouble and you'll be backing from square one and get blacklisted and you'll never be in that search engine again. 
uh, play by the rules these days. If you play by the rules and you're a smart guerrilla marketer, there's no question about it. You make a ton more money trying to sneak around and do something that's going to get you caught in a week or a month or whatever it is. Um, you know, be, be a true a guerrilla entrepreneur and you make way more money than try to be a gypsy marketer trying to you know, dodge and move every time something new comes out because you're trying to play the games. Um, now we're going to go through some advanced strategies uh, to optimize your site to get maximum ranking on maintain your high ranking. The first thing is links are king. We talked about this already. You want links from relevant sites that have good content rich information. Uh, you're looking for people that uh, are important in their fields that have content rich websites that have high traffic to the websites. You can tell us by all the tools we gave you before the same tools you used to find affiliates. You also find to find linking partners. And of course, every time that somebody affiliate links to you, he is creating a new link. And as long as he's related to your product or service, he has good traffic, which are your best affiliates. They're creating a great um, uh, opportunity for you to rank high in all the search engines because you have so many affiliates that are interrelated to you and creating this community of links that is all related and playing by the rules. One of the reasons we're ranked so high, we're number two in Google right now. Number two in Google in internet marketing. One of the main reasons is because we have tens of thousands of affiliates linking to us. We've created this big affiliate program instantaneously because of that we become popular in Google.